On the 4th of January this year, PC Rachel Kimber of Northumbria Police faced an accelerated gross misconduct hearing regarding an alleged breach of the police's professional standards. And this is the third Northumbria Police report in just my first two days back. Maybe they're trying to take the top spot away from the Metropolitan Police. Interestingly though, there's not a single mention of this that I can find in the news, even in local rags, and as a result I have only the Regulation 63 notice which fails to give any real details. details. This is mainly due to the fact that Kimber had already been dealt with by a court for her offence and the misconduct hearing was brought about because of that fact. Uh, because of the fact that she was found guilty, but even so, I've been unable to find any information regarding her attendance at court for the matter. Rachel Kimball was found guilty by a court of the offence of assault, namely occasioning harm by way of beating, contrary to Section 39 of the Criminal Justice Act 1988. She was convicted of this assault, but I don't know the outcome, as that information I have not been able to find, as in, was it a caution, was it a suspended sentence, I just don't know. All I can do is give you the information available from the Regulation 63 form. The hearing determined that Kimber engaged in the activity of assault by beating and becoming subject to court proceedings and the associated conviction arising. Kimber took a very significant risk with the reputation of the force. Although the hearing didn't suggest that she had set out to deliberately harm the force, nor do they believe that it was a conscious thought by her at the time of committing the offence, they do say that it is an undeniable reality that harm to the force has been done. The harm done to Northumbria Police was determined by the hearing to have been two distinct and separate elements, although they were interlinked. The first element of harm was made when she assaulted the victim, causing them physical harm. Her subsequent conviction after the incident made it clear that there was a degree of harm made to the victim, although the harm occasions against the victim was said to have been at the lesser end of the scale of physical violence. The second element of harm was that there was an understandable expectation of the public that police officers will act at all times in ways that do not discredit the police service. And with that comes the expectation that they will not behave in ways that they would otherwise find themselves taking action towards if they were to encounter such behaviours being demonstrated by others. In other words, don't do what you're arresting other people for doing. Due to these elements, the hearing found that the actual and potential for harm from her against the force was high. They do state, however, that they found the existence of deliberate violence to be an obvious and compelling aggravating factor in the case. In mitigation to her offence, the hearing found that it was a one-off episode. Kimber admitted the offence at the earliest stage and she had engaged positively with the misconduct procedure, accepting responsibility for her actions. Explaining their reason for the decision, the hearing chair, which was the Chief Constable of Northumbria Police, Winton Keenan, said, I now turn to the choices given to me by the regulations. I do so. In doing so, I feel it appropriate to state that I do not intend this outcome to be perceived as an assessment of how the officer has previously performed her policing duties in the workplace and when dealing with members of the communities, apparently doing so in a diligent and value-adding manner whilst performing as an effective and efficient police officer and thereby a valued public servant. In other words, previous good character. This being said, he said, I find myself in a position where I'm required to hold on to my firm belief that professional standards across policing will not and cannot be maintained effectively if appropriate action is taken only against some officers and that instead, wherever possible, action be taken towards all officers consistently, without fear or favour and according to the circumstances presented. Therefore, in these circumstances, it is my determination a final written warning is simply not sufficient to deal with the seriousness of this case. I find there is an ongoing risk of very significant reputational harm to the force arising from this matter and that it is not one where a warning, even a final written one, is sufficient to mark the extent of the breaches demonstrated. Therefore, whilst I have given weight to the mitigation presented on the officer's behalf and taken account of her previous record of service with Northumbria Police, I do not believe they provide adequate reason to reduce the ultimate outcome. 
As such, I determine this is a matter where the only appropriate and acceptable outcome by way of sanction is dismissal without notice. This being the case, it naturally follows that I must order the police, I must order the officer is placed on the barred list administered by the College of Policing, and this is my additional determination. So, although we don't have all the details of the offence, when it took place, what the circumstances around it were, the injuries inflicted on the victim, etc., we do have the outcome, and to be fair, I think it's a reasonable one. So, with that, all that's left for me to say is that I'm glad that... Another one bites the dust.